Hello, my name is Brett Fuller, and today I will be discussing the use of abandoned mines by wildlife, a project orchestrated by Dr. Tim Armstrong. Mines are speckled all across the Rocky Mountain region. It's what brought settlers west um, in search of gold, oftentimes. They're a sign of prosperity and wealth. <clears throat> Successful mines has led to booming towns such as Trinidad or more close to home, my great little mining town of Creed. <clears throat> mines are uh, very abundant across the Rocky Mountain region. Here is a map of all the known mines in Colorado. There are over 23,000 abandoned mines, of which only about 6,000 mines have been properly remediated. This leaves over 15,000 mines that are still out there, not properly taken care of. And these mines have many concerns. One of those concerns is human safety. I've personally known somebody that has been killed in mine and I'm sure that's not the only one. There are many people that get trapped and lost in mines and oftentimes are seriously injured or die. <clears throat> Other concerns with mine with mines are environmental concerns. In 2015, you may have heard of the Gold Keen Mine still in southwestern Colorado. Um, this is a mine that's in between Silverton and Dur Durango, and it, the, it busted and let loose a tremendous amount of mine waste into the Animas River. And the EPA came in and funded a uh, very expensive project to help clean up and restore the adverse effects the mine spillage had on the river and surrounding ecosystem. White nose syndrome is a fungal disease that affects bats. Bats are often found in these caves and entering and disturbance of these caves can track this disease into these caves or mines. The disease is quickly spreading. Um, it is currently located in the eastern United States, but very recently it has been discovered to be in Wyoming. It is knocking on Colorado's doorstep. Again, these mines are very important for the habitat of bats. Bats are important species. They're a very diverse group and the white nose syndrome brought in um, from the Eastern US and Europe, it could be detrimental to these populations. So we need to stay ahead of it and control these mines and to protect the bats. In our project, we have five research questions. The first re question was, are wildlife other than bats visiting these mines? And if so, are they entering the mines? Does the visitation vary seasonally? And are some mines visited more often than others? Also, are some species visiting these mines more frequently than others? <clears throat> Here's a previous map of all the mines known in Colorado. Um, our study focused on the northern Sangre de Cristo Mountains. Um, there, that is shown in the white rectangle. The Sangre de Cristo Mountains are very steep, rugged mountains. They border the eastern edge of the San Luis Valley, and they are speckled with many, many mines. Uh, here is a zoomed in picture of the northern Sangre de Cristo range. Uh, the yellow pins are the mines that we used in this study. We placed camera traps in front of the mine openings to record uh, species and visitation. Uh, on the left is a small picture of the 
setup we used, our cameras were posted outside the mines to capture animals in and around the mines. We detected a variety of different species and genre. With this, we decided to focus in on the carnivores and how they were using the mines. We detected 11 different species of carnivores. <clears throat> we then went to look at the frequency that the carnivores were visiting these mines. On the y-axis, we have the number of mi mines visited, and on the bottom, the visitation rate. We can see on the high end of visitation, we had 14 mines that had one zero to one visits every two months. And on the other end, we had very high visitation in one or two mines. <clears throat> we had detected very different carnivores in the mines. Uh, the majority of uh, species entered the mines, but there were a few that were just observed around them. Other carnivores that were in the areas, but were not seen by the mines are also listed. <clears throat> Another question we asked was, does visitation vary seasonally? And here we can see that visitations are concentrated in the colder winter months. Now the 2017 year was a very dry year, <clears throat> but we still see that they were still using these mines in the cold months. The black line across the graph is, represents the average temperature. And we can see it uh, drops significantly during the times these animals are inside these mines. In contrast, 2018-2019 was a very wet year. We had a lot of snow. The visitation was more uniform, but you can still see it was concentrated in the colder winter months. We can see the different species usage on these graphs. The pumas were pretty consistent throughout all the months, and as expected, black bears are present most of the time, but disappear due to hibernation. The spike in March is due to the observation of young of these animals when they enter the mines and come out with young this time of year, and that provides that spike in uh, visitation. <clears throat> One of the last questions we asked was Are some of the mines visited more often than others? In this data, we see that small and medium sized mine openings were more frequently visited than the larger portals. <clears throat> well, the large portals were, the animals still entered these mines, but not quite as much as the smaller portals. Vertical shafts were virtually not uh, visited as much at all. Um, there is a outlier here of a vertical shaft that was a very shallow, uh, not dangerous, shaft that was off visited. Um, we also looked at the aspect of the mines and how it, what direction it faced if that had an effect in the visitation of the mines. And what we can conclude is that the aspect of the mines doesn't really have a effect on whether it's being visited more or less. The final question was, are some species visiting the mines more frequently? And to answer that, we say yes. Pumas were the most frequently observed species in this study. Not only did they visit more often, they visited more mines as well. <clears throat> there were other species like the bobcat or the bear that visited large numbers of mines, but not very often. The red fox and long-tailed weasel on the other hand, visited very few mines in a very few times. 
we saw some interesting things during this study. We observed a western spotted skunk and ringtail, both of which were not known to be in the same group to Crystal Mountains. And this is very interesting because we did detect a large number of, of these individuals during our study. We also saw some interesting species inter interactions. On the picture to the left, we have a gray fox and a western spotted skunk. On the image on the right, we only see a gray fox currently. But if as we go through these pictures, we see a western spotted skunk run the gray fox off. We also saw a lot of interactions with pumas. Um, they multiple individuals were there during the same time. This could have been for breeding purposes or protecting the territory. We are unsure. As I mentioned earlier, there was spike in visitation due to the young seen exiting the mines. On the left, we see a gray fox with her young behind her. And on the right, you may not immediately see them, but the adult puma here with three sets of eyes in the back of the mine that we assume are kittens. We were also seeing that these animals were using these mines as scent posts. We see the bob bobcat scenting the uh, mine post on the left in a bobcat spraying scent on the rocks on the right. Again, as scent posts, we see this mountain lion on the left smelling rocks and not but 20 minutes later a black bear comes up and smelling the same spot and this is why we believe there is something that's scenting right there causing these animals to smell these certain spots through this study we got a hypothesis that these mines vertical mines mainly were acting as a seed trap the outlier of frequently visited vertical shaft is a, that is shallow acted we believe caught the seeds from the trees around it and this brought birds and rodents to the area bringing small carnivores and then larger car carnivores looking for prey we also saw the resident rodents of all mines living in the area it's an interesting picture we have here Another interesting thing we saw was the mineral source for ungulates. It was very often went through large amounts of pictures of the ungulates hanging around these mines areas, licking the walls. <clears throat> we believe they're using them as a salt lick, trying to get the minerals off the rocks. It also enter the mines, which is a brave thing to do as a prey species. Because I'm sure the uh, large carnivores entering the mines leave their scents as we talked about earlier and these animals should be able to smell it as well. <clears throat> With that it could be a potential source for prey. These bighorn are sitting around these mines very often and these pumas come in later and I'm sure they know they've been there. <clears throat> To answer our research questions, we look at our wildlife other than bats visiting, visiting these mines. Yes, there's a wide range of species visiting these mines. We then looked at our carnivores entering these mines. Again, yes, we see all kinds of carnivores around and inside these mines. Does visitation vary seasonally? The winter months is where peak visitation happens. There are all, although it occurs all year, the majority of it is during the winter months. Are some mines visited more than others? No, there is not an aspect or direction of mine that visit, it is visited more, but the size of the added or opening attracts animals differently. The smaller 
openings are visited more frequently than the large openings or vertical shafts. Are some carnivore species visiting mines more frequently? Pumas are very frequently visiting these mines. They are the most seen species and they are seen at almost every mine. But we also see human visitation, which is a concern. See, hunters, adults interested in these mines, but we also see people allowing their children into these mines. And they may think they're aware of what could happen, but you never know when a mine can collapse. This is an image of a collapsed mine at it in the area. So to can conclude, and we have management recommendations, amended mines are important landscape elements for some carnivores. We see the high visitation rate of pumas, and we can assume that this is an important element for them. Horizontal adit should be monitored for one year before gating or closing. This is because these horizontal adits are more frequently visited than the vertical shafts and that's why we want to know if animals are using these before we close them off. The larger adits had lower carnivore visitation but more human visitation. These are the area for concern because humans are entering them and they're not as important for the animals and that's where we need to close these and protect these mines. We did not observe any carnivores entering deep vertical shafts. These sh shafts could be the most dangerous because they are not always easily, easily seen. <clears throat> uh, when the people are walking out in the dark, it's uh, not uncommon to walk upon things you aren't sure of, and that could be a vertical mine shaft that you fall into. And this could often lead to serious injury or death. <clears throat> With that, I would like to acknowledge some of our partners and support. Adam State University, BLM, Great Sand Dunes National Park and Preserve, Quarter Scholar Program, and the Rio Grande National Forest. Thank you for your time.